Good morning. Welcome to AI Daily. And we have three stories for you today, as always. Our our first story is possibly very sad, but the end of LK99. So it seems as this LK99 tweeted by Alex Kaplan and confirmed by another paper and a few others seems to be what's called a ferromagnetic material. So it does not show signs of superconductivity or resistance. So we may not be back. Barb? Well, you know, never call anything dead as long as there's somebody who cares and has hope. And if this has inspired anyone to get into deep tech and, and physics and, and chemistry, then it's an absolute win for humanity. And we actually need way more of this stuff happening where people get super excited about a potential development. Uh, they focus their attention on it. They focus their effort. They actually put in the effort to discover it. If we had this going on with every part of science, then we would already be in, you know, the meme of the future where cars are flying around and people are living forever. Uh, this is the absolute best type of thing that humanity can be doing. And I encourage it. And I think we need way more of it. So actually, I think a huge win for humanity, uh, if not a win, win for, for everyone who got to read and learn too. I completely agree. Connor? Yeah, I completely agree with what Farb said. Many people knock on pop science like this, saying it's kind of bad for the scientific industry that kind of diminishes the quality of science. But everything is pop culture nowadays, as you see with a podcast such as AI Daily. So people talking about science, people being interested in science, it means a lot. And maybe it's over, maybe it's not. I still hold out a little hope. This is only one paper from one university in China, but we shall see. Either way, though, I agree. Pop science is a win for science. You know, everything, all science is going from not knowing to knowing. So to argue that we didn't know at the beginning, therefore it was the wrong thing to do is just the most backwards thinking humanly imaginable. All scientific progress is based on not knowing when you start and knowing something at the end, even if that's knowing that this particular thing is not the thing, that's still what we're going for. Uh, it, you're an absolutely insane lunatic who come on the show. I will debate with you here. If you think that anything about LK99 was bad news or bad in any way, just don't be a literally nothing but a troll on Twitter. I'm not trying to give you a platform. But if you have anything intelligent to say about this, come on board and we can talk it out through. You'd have to be a lunatic. The whole world to say came there together for it. It was honestly this. really cool the past few weeks to watch literally everyone get excited about it. It's something that isn't so down in the dumps. People are actually getting excited about science. Everyone got to learn more about it. Us three, too. We learned so much more about chemistry and physics, et cetera. So for the next time, superconductors hopefully come up again, we're going to do the exact same thing. And we're going to... Shill us LK100. We're here for I love it. it. I love it. Well, our second story of today is back to hardcore AI, a little bit off of superconductors, but we're talking about MK1. So MK1 is similar to GGML of sorts, pretty, pretty much trying to improve inference speed of these models. So if you've ever run a large you know, Llama instance at 70 billion parameters, for instance, you might wonder, hey, why is mine so much slower than OpenAI's and Anthropics? How are they getting their models to output tokens so fast? Well, MK1 wants to bring that to everyone. So Connor, can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, MK1 is really trying to bring, as you said, the inference capabilities of companies like Google, of companies like OpenAI, of companies like Anthropic, trying to bring those capabilities to everyone in the open with open source. Their demo is only closed beta right now, but what they're saying it is and what they're aspiring for it to be is very hopeful for what they can do. They've designed something called MKML, which is kind of their framework for compressing models. Their first codec is called MK600. It's just an initial compression codec, but it compresses these models by 60% while keeping them to be basically the same model with basically the same fidelity. So this is very exciting development that they have released and that they're working on. And I'm excited to see what else MK1 comes up with. Yeah, I think similar to the cloud wave and everything else, you have, you know, open AIs and Anthropics doing these really hard engineering challenges that everyone's are saying, hey, how is this happening? And now you're getting the de democratization of all of that for anyone who wants to run these models. Farb, what does this mean to you? I'm, I'm running a very large language model inside my head and I'm one, wondering why it's slower than everybody else's. So this... <laughs> Uh, applies di directly to me and the problems that I'm having on a daily basis. 
what they're doing is is straight up picks and shovels and it's a beautiful thing and you know you couldn't be more picks and shovels than saying hey here's a model that doesn't even work on a single gpu we're making it work on a single gpu here's a model that you need this super expensive gpu to do we're going to make it work on a much more available more affordable gpu uh this is a big way of how you make progress in the world it's not just oh big scientific discovery uh here's a paper on attention and everything's done this is the real work of getting you know ai and llm working everywhere and actually bringing the potential value to realized value so uh th this is the sort of stuff that's you know going to move the industry actually forward in the sense of not just knowledge and discovery but actually implementation and yeah, changing I I bring people's this up every lives. time we talk about technology such as this but same thing we saw with llama meta came out with the original llama and then ggml and the ggml team built llama.cpp and now llama.cpp is used by everyone who uses llama including meta so it's really connection between including. closed source and open source and between these big scientific research possibilities and these as you said, for picks and shovels that unlock making these models actually usable for day-to-day -day infants. We're in like the Docker Kubernetes era of AI. And I think a lot of these companies and actual applications are going to be super valuable to people and just start out as dev tools. So really cool. Our last story of today is Stable Diffusion has launched Stable Code. So they've been talking about a fine-tuned code model for a while. They've released three different versions of this coding model. I didn't get to look into this one too much. Connor, anything different about their coding model that's you know different than maybe open ai's or different than some of the fine tunings other people have done honestly not much sadly i, I kind of hope to see more of stability um there, it does have a sixteen thousand context window and it is, it is only three billion parameters and the performance is probably pretty good but that's kind of the exact same thing we see from replit's three billion three billion parameter model so stability is kind of just repeating the same thing here they did that with another model we talked about last time Maybe with stable LM2, we'll see more from them. But right now, kind of just this, what other people have from stability. Stability is really pumping out these different fine tunings, et cetera. Far, have you heard anyone using these or kind of interested in some of the ones Stable Diffusion has been putting out? Stability? I, I haven't spoken to anybody uh, using this, nor do I think you can actually particularly use this one quite yet. Uh, I didn't, unless I'm wrong, I didn't notice it was, if it was available I, I yet. Was so. it? Yeah, it's on Hugging Face. Yeah, it's on Hugging Face. Oh, it is? Okay, yeah. No, yeah, no, no, you're right. Actually, I did dig into that just before the, the just before the show started. Um, but I don't know anybody who's using it. This is the right and good thing for stability to do. I tend to agree that you're, it sometimes feels like they're kind of coming out with things like a little bit after somebody else <laughs> drops something pretty similar, and it's not and it's not that different. Uh, they, they shouldn't keep it quiet. They they should release it. Uh, it's it's the good and right thing for them to do. Uh, it puts pressure on the space to keep you know doing this stuff. Uh, if you don't do it, stability will do it. Uh, even if you do it, stability will do it anyways. So kudos to them. And thanks for them to, you know, for continuing to do this work and, and, and push this stuff out. Even if every single announcement doesn't seem like some world shattering um, accomplishment, it's good that they're doing it. But I tend to agree. I was, I'm always kind of looking for the like, okay, where is this, you know, meaningfully different uh, than say something that Replit is doing or something somebody else is doing. And I didn't quite see that either. So you know, it's open, so maybe people can make it better than some of these folks that are launching things that are not as open. So, uh, you know, I'm going to keep cheering stability to keep doing what they're doing. And uh, I think they've uh, they've made some waves in the space and I wouldn't Absolutely. be surprised. They, it was pretty cool yeah. how they used a ton of, they, I think they used a little bit more kind of code instruction response pairs than some other people, which with the long context window, again, I haven't got to try it yet, but could do a little bit better for some of these longer programming tasks. So maybe that's the defining factor for stable they may not be just even doing a good enough you know job of explaining yeah. why it might be more applicable and, and more useful you know the blog post yeah. on it wasn't that long um you know they could have potentially shared more about it and you know showed some examples of people putting it to work get some hackathons going around it and and kind of like you know maybe it is better but we're having a tough time seeing if it's if it's meaningfully different and if it is that they should you know put some effort into getting people to understand that it's a it's a mimetic world you gotta you gotta build things and make your case to the world about absolutely why this i'll test it is. out and be back tomorrow with ai daily see how it is but as always what else are we seeing far um i saw a post from i think robert scoble who said he spoke to a ceo who is using 30 different llms 
to provide customer support uh, on his product be not, I'm actually not surprised and it kind of makes sense because he's got to create this whole pipeline around, you know, figuring out whether the, this first LLM is hallucinating. <laughs> it's just LLMs yeah. all the way down to try and get something practically useful. Um, and I just thought that was, you know, we've seen this type of stuff before in our own work, uh, where it's not just enough to do one pass with an LLM. You got to have LLMs watching LLMs and LLMs watching the LLMs yep. and watching the LLMs, like a massive bureaucracy Council. of LLMs that you have to build. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And uh, I think that's probably the future yeah. to be honest. That's why you we know, need the, to get these bottles the, cheaper so the, we can the run them through thousands of times. It's like your brain. We can run tons of models, tons of model. Yeah. There's not going to be the God model that rules all things. Um, the laws of physics and our ability to build hardware to accommodate that alone is a, is, is a bottleneck to keep that from happening. Uh, you know, I don't care if you have this, the algorithm to, to, to do the calculations, you need the hardware is the hardware that can, you know, actually hold the memory and, and, and all those things. So, uh, Connor, what about you? Future, I think. Yeah, I saw that Soupbase released their Hugging Face integration. I kind of predicted this a little bit back when Firebase talked about their integration from Firebase extensions and Firebase data store into Palm and all the Palm API models. And then, yeah, Soupbase yesterday released their integration all the way from Soupbase database into any Hugging Face model into Soupbase edge functions. Always great stuff going on at Soupbase. And I'm sure they're going to do more here with AI. So excited to see what they do next. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw two different things um, that I wanted to highlight because I loved both of them a lot. The first one was someone used Midjourney and Runway to make a Mortal Kombat style kind of a video here. So they use celebrities within Mortal Kombat. You can play as like Joe Biden and then like Cleopatra or something. And then you can play as like Ronaldo. It was really cool. I, I remember a while back we talked about kind of just endless characters in games. Oh, especially anyone. And I think it's just, it, it's so cool to see. I like that little video. And then the second one was it's this thing called 101 school. So you can pretty much create a, like a full course with AI and then they have chatting with it on the right. And it's actually pretty good. They had one on poker and game theory and you just kind of type in what you want to learn. It generates all the course study for you and it generates it on the right to kind of chat with it real time. Pretty simple. You can do this with other tools, of course, but I just like the way they laid it out. So we'll link it below and check it out. As uh, always, thank you all for tuning into AI Daily and we will see you again tomorrow.